Hi there, okay, uh, I'm now going to talk about uh, the MBN fixed wireless stuff. Uh, questions from NF Sutim. Um, he asks, uh, using could the uh, wireless uh, network, as in the MBN wireless, be used as a backup service? Uh, or could MBN offer that? Um, second question is um, about uh, whether there should be restrictions on uh, how much people can complain and object to the placement of wireless towers. Um, the third um, the question is around uh, black spot uh, funding, which comes from the government, and whether that should create uh, neutral towers. And the fourth question, which is the big one, is around the whole wireless performance and capacity. So using wireless for backup, or using it fixed wireless for backup, um, currently MBN have no plans to do this. Um, the reason is, is because they... Uh, in theory anyway, spec out their wireless sites to cope with uh, a certain number of users. Obviously each of those users has to have an aerial installed, which costs money. Um, and so generally speaking, the MBN have decided, hey, we'll provide a single service, so if it's fiber to the node. And if you want to back up, your best bet is to frankly use something like a, a 3G or a 4G uh, dongle uh, to, uh, to keep your service running. Um, frankly, I kind of agree with them. I think that's actually probably um, a prudent way to go. At the end of the day, MBN uh, are on the, you know, they are trying to produce a network that is, essentially does the backhaul, that, sorry, the, the, the heavy lifting. Um, and uh, so therefore, really, it's up, for, uh, up to other people to get their own backups. There's another important reason is that, don't forget, MBN is just the final bit of the network. It's the final bit from essentially what they call the point of interconnect um, which is where they hand off between the, the handoff between MBN and the carriers um, and your house. Now in my experience a good number of outages are actually caused by the providers network not by MBN. Um, so if you had fixed wireless as a backup sure it would protect you if your uh, your local wire failed, some backer went through it or whatever. But if it was actually a service provider issue, um, you would be still going through that service provider. So um, it would still fail. So it actually makes a lot more sense to use 3G and 4G. It's a very cheap option um, uh, to provide a backup. Um, the, what I call the NIMBY issue, the not in my backyard where um, people object to the placement of towers and the like, Look, I'm not really very well qualified to um, answer that one. Uh, while I can see uh, the utility of, of uh, essentially having some sort of level of, of it's got to go here, um, there are, we do have rights. We do have the right to object to things that the government does. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we're very happy, for example, to uh, complain about the placement of a radioactive uh, waste dump. Um, and uh, while I don't want to get into the arguments about the, um, the you know, ra uh, what do you call it, uh, the radio waves and whether they're harmful to your health, because frankly, I don't know. Um, it, is, it is quite reasonable for people to object. Um, and we just have to go through that process. We have to, there is a formal process for things to go through. And, uh, and sometimes those, those uh, objections do get overridden. Um, black spot funding. Um, and whether the resultant towers should be vendor neutral. Look, I fully agree. I think uh, the whole black spot program is, um, is a massive bit of sort of corporate welfare, uh, to use the American term, where the government essentially pays typically Telstra to roll out a tower and they then get to use it for themselves, i.e. Telstra, and they get to deny it from other people. Now, I think if government money is being involved, uh, then at least it should be vendor neutral. It should be, you know, everybody should be allowed to uh, put their own equipment on those towers. Um, there would be some uh, interesting issues about exactly who owned the tower and that, and I think that's why they probably haven't done that. Uh, but fundamentally, I do agree with the, uh, with the principle of it. So finally, uh, wireless capacity. So when fixed wireless was first rolled out, uh, we were in a very different place. I mean, people don't remember what the internet was like um, just five or eight years ago. Um, 
you know, we didn't use anything like as much data. Um, we, we Netflix didn't exist. Um, and so I think in some ways they were caught uh, they were caught unawares with the growth in data and they had no real way of upgrading the towers fast enough plus <clears throat> I think there was, there's been some arguing about the funding of this who's actually going to pay for it and uh, there was a, a broadband levy that was uh, floated around but never happened um, because the fixed wireless is a very expensive it's actually more expensive to uh, connect a fiber to the pre uh, fiber to the uh, no, uh, sorry fixed wireless than it is fiber to the premises. It's something like four and a half thousand dollars per premises to connect up. That's obviously including the cost of the towers and the like. So, so I think they were somewhat they were uh, they they were caught unawares with first of all the take up, how many people would actually connect. Um, the second problem is is that when the uh, change of government and the change of direction in MBN, it very much became about cost saving. And uh, my, I believe the original plan, as far as it was sort of uh, nailed down, was to run fiber to every single tower. Um, and then obviously pick up the signals, go from there. When, when the cost cutting came along, they decided instead to uh, connect these towers one to another. They'd connect one, fiber to, uh, one tower to fiber, and then they'd use microwave links, essentially just sort of, you know, point to point links, um, between the towers. Now. I think those have got congested um, and those often are a restriction on the total amount of data um, and so they've been slowly upgrading those. Um, my biggest issue with fixed wireless is uh, MBN's very limited transparency on the whole thing. They will not tell us which towers are congested, their level, but even, even their measurement of congestion I think is very poor. I think they, they say any, anybody who gets more than six megabits at peak times um, is, uh, is is declared is declared okay. Um, so, because the fundamental problem with wireless mm -hmm. is that it's restricted in the amount of bandwidth overall. Like you've got a spectrum, um, and this is and, and because they were selling uh, services on fixed wires for roughly the same price. They used to be exactly the same price, but they've sort of varied a bit now. Um, as uh, fixed uh, fixed lines, so that's fibre of the node and fibre of the premises, um, there were really no restrictions on data. So mobile networks, because they're much more constrained, um, they, uh, you know, people were just, you know, using Netflix, and why wouldn't they? They were using it as exactly like it was a fixed wire, uh, sorry, a fixed line network. Um, and of course, there was no way for MBN to go, ah, but hold on, this actually does cost us a lot more, we have to upgrade more and the like. Um, and this is why, uh, you know, mobile data typically is much more expensive, you know, through the, um, through the, uh, you know, the normal mobile network than it is through, uh, uh, through uh, uh, any of the MBN network. Um, so I think we're always going to see a level of congestion uh, on the fixed wireless network. Um, I don't, I think this also has implications for, for 5G as well, because I think it's going to suffer from the same economics. Okay, that's uh, the end of my segment on wireless.